balls to the wall, balls to the wall, testicles on the uh, this infrastructure. once again with NASCAR Heat 2 and this episode of our season with Tom Jeskis number 60 not iRacing 4 we are going to be completing race 31 of 33 which is going to take place at my home track Texas Motor Speedway for the O'Reilly Auto Parts 300 in the last episode we raced at Kansas Speedway and lapped the entire field due to their stupid pit strategy that they also use at Charlotte but they had a caution which ruined my entire chances of making the playoffs so my goal is to win all four of the final races of the season and make every single fucking driver salty. Here are the playoff standings. Just now, Guy is in first place because he's actually turning out to be a dominant driver towards the end of the season, which is a good time to do it with how the format works. I think William Byron's going to make it to the final four, and Elliot Sauer just might do it due to the consistency. I think I ruined his last race at Kansas Speedway. I didn't do that much to him, but it apparently really ruined his race. Daniel Henrik finished in second at Kansas Speedway somehow. Might have been his fast pit crew or something, but of course he was a lap down just like everybody else. So I'm trying to keep him below the cut line. And, well, I don't really care about any of the other drivers that much except for Daniel Hemrick because he was the one that knocked me out of the playoffs for sure. Last time we came to this new configuration of Texas, we had ourselves a race late in the afternoon. And it's late in the afternoon right now, or maybe it's a little earlier in the afternoon. I don't know, whatever. So this is going to be for qualifying. I'm assuming this is going to be a night race here. So I like the variety that the Xfinity Series is having with Texas. Let's go ahead and get into qualifying. One thing I know about the Xfinity Series at Texas Motor Speedway, you still have to let off the gas a bit in turns 1 and 2. And in 3 and 4, it's still a little bit tight. But it's just a tad bit. And if you don't, you somehow wind up collecting the outside wall. I say collecting. You just the wall's not something you can collect. You can't just take it with you and put it in a bag with the rest of your outside walls. I mean, maybe, theoretically, you can. I don't know where I get this stupid bogus excuse for commentary, but my car just got really tight um, entering turn four. I don't know why, but that was unfortunate. I felt like I let off the gas enough in turn three, but it didn't happen. Somehow, we're actually starting in the top 30, but it's going to be in 28th. Last time we started in the 30th, which was also on the outside, and... Um, this is definitely an inside lane track now that it's been recently repaved. Blake Cook is going to be starting on the pole. Daniel Hermick is an 18, so that's nice to see. Uh, any championship contenders starting in the back of the field? Not really. I think they're all going to be starting in the top 10. Suarez, William Byron, Justin Allgaier. Uh, I don't. I didn't see Elliot Sadler. Okay, I guess Elliot Sadler is in the top 5 or top 10 somewhere because I didn't see him anywhere else. Whatever. It is so hard to just read race results and shit in this game because they don't let you control how it scrolls through it. But, let's go ahead and get this race underway. From 28th position, this is our best qualifying spot in a long time. I think it might have been 10 races I qualified this well. I'm going to try to get to the inside. Nope, I wasn't even clear of Ben Kennedy. I enjoy Lagano on my inside. Our shift in the third gear was better than everybody else's somehow. Uh, I don't want to do what I did in the truck series and run the outside lane for all the state because I can definitely do better on the inside. We all don't know that much. Uh... Last time we came to this track in the Xfinity Series, we had ourselves, like, three different drivers dumping themselves and brake checking me and all kinds of crap. I just remember being a really hectic race. We're down to the inside after about half the track. Darrell Wallace Jr. is not going anywhere. Uh, I'm trying to make passes, but they're holding the inside. Didn't they do that last time? Last time we came to this track, they held the inside line so that I could never get underneath them and never move through, through the field. Uh, that's how it's going to be. We're going to cause a lot of wrecks in this race because I'm not going to deal with this. I'm going to hold the inside line and get, your, get in your way nonsense. No, if I've got the momentum and there's a hole, I'm taking it. If you close the hole too early, you get dumped. Yeah, fuck everybody. Fuck every single one of these drivers. I could be in the playoffs right now. I could have be locked into the Final Four if I had just won Charlotte. But no, we had some David Hoops contract with the freaking rest of the drivers in the series. Get out of the way, Michael Lynette. Uh... Sadly, Mike Lynette is not in the playoffs anymore, last I checked. I don't recall seeing that five in there. But, um, I think he was in the first round of the playoffs. He should have been. I recall him winning a race, right? I like how the AI, they still do that thing where they go down to the apron. 
I can't do that. <laughs> I don't know why I can't do that. There's Elliot Tyler, who I'm pretty sure started in the top ten. He's kind of falling out. They're on the outside with uh, William Byron. So, that's really not helping the fact that he's below the cut line. And William Byron, I think he's going to make it in because he's so far ahead of everybody else in the playoffs. I mean, the only driver he's not in front of right now would definitely be Justin Allgaier. Justin Allgaier is probably going to win this damn championship. I mean, unless somehow one of the drivers does better than in the Homestead race. Uh, but at the end of the first stage, you're going to finish in 11th place. That is very similar to our last race at um, Kansas. Did we finish 11th in that one? Or maybe it was um, maybe it was stage 2. I don't remember. But they're not going to be taking pit stops after stage 1. Hopefully, they take pit stops after stage 2 so that we can start the final stage and actually race with everybody. That would be, I really appreciate that. I really would. But, yeah. Nope. We're not pitting. So we're going to start the next stage on the inside, which is um, really good. Plus, I think we might just win stage two because we're close to the lead. We're on the inside, and this is going to be probably five laps, just like stage two was at Kansas, and also Charlotte, in my belief. Uh, yep, it's going to be five laps. I think I can do this in four, maybe even three. I don't know. Oh, Custer's leaving the inside open. Yeah, give me that shit. That ain't yours, it's mine. I mean, he's a Haas driver, and I like Haas because Tony Stewart um, has a partnership with that company, but I, fuck everybody, man. Just everybody. No no one's my friend. Everybody's my enemy in the Xfinity Series now. I hate every single freaking driver in the series. Except for Justin Allgaier, Elliot Sadler, and William Byron. Daniel Suarez, get on the gas and let me underneath you. None of this piss me off crap. No one's allowed to piss me off. I, I am royalty. Get out of my way. I gave him a big shove in the turn one, which actually helped him out. You, be you better go or get out of my way. How are you getting loose off the corner? Get the uh, it should have not taken that long for that to happen, if, all if at all. But get out of the way. Stop blocking me. No one's allowed to block me. I said I could have done this in three laps, but we had Daniel Suarez holding me up for a good half the damn track. And Eric Jones just moved. I think that was Brandon Poole up the track in that blue car. It might have been Brandon Poole. I don't know. Okay, just now Guyer is taking the bottom lane. We're starting to get tight on the tire wear. Uh, I don't think we can win this stage at all because whoever's in the lead right now is pulling away. They're really making it work. Oh, this car can't hold the inside anymore. If I'm going to win this race, it's going to have to be a car that can hold the inside lane on tire wear. We're really going to have to loosen this thing up, which might be bad on fresh tires, but in the long run it should help. I don't know how I managed to hit the outside wall right there. Justin Allgaier is holding the inside lane. Things are about to get dirty. Yeah, I can't win this stage. That is very, very disappointing. I definitely should have been able to win this stage. Well, hitting the apron, losing myself up. I'm just following Justin Allgaier, who's doing crap with his car that my car literally can't do because of the physics engine. Eric Jones is pushing me to the fucking outside wall. Fuck you. You suck, dipshit. Ah, uh, The leaders are a perfection. I want to win this race. I intend to win this race. This is not going to stop me. Nope. This is not about to happen. This might be stage two, but I ain't about to see this shit in another freaking five minutes or whatever. No. Well, we're going to finish in the stage. We're going to get a top five at stage two, but I was supposed to win this stage. Salty about anything that isn't exactly what I wanted. I'll tell you that much. That's how it's going to be for the rest of this freaking championship. Blake Cook, who started on the pole, um, has that clean air advantage or some crap. Everybody's pitting. I'm going to pit too. We're going to get four tires, two cans of fuel. Um, not going to repair damage because we don't really even have any. We're going to drop the wedge down to 49%, which should be good enough to help me out in the long run with that tire wear. And we lose 30 positions, along with several other drivers. So, like, half the field decided not to pit. Why? Why? Why do people decide not to pit? What good will it do you? Are you expecting a caution again? Probably with how reckless I am at this point in my championship. Well, I think we just need to pass, like, I don't know, five cars or something. And then everybody else needs to get down pit road. And I don't know how I'm going to avoid those guys. We had the inside advantage. That was nice because it was like what, 35th or whatever it was. 
and eat off the gas a little more than usual because I know that everybody in front of me is going to be extremely slow. I'm kind of scared to make passes with all these guys on the tire wear, but balls to the wall, balls to the wall, testicles on the uh, this infrastructure. Uh, Steven Knight's in the way. Uh, I wish I could just dump every driver that pulls up for me and blocks me because I don't want to be blocked right now. I just want to have three more orgasms, you know, every single race in this championship. An orgasm that is victory lane. We already had an orgasm in the last video. I want three more. Uh, I mean, there's a there's a whole week of a wait period between the, the ones I'm getting this weekend and the ones next weekend. My computer just re finished rendering uh, that NASCAR 2011, the game video that came out a couple days ago. If y'all haven't seen that yet, go see it because that was one of the best race film episodes in a while. It was at uh, Chicagoland with Kurt Busch. Tyler actually became a thing for one of the most unusual times in the entire series. Tyler is literally only effective for the 100% race length deal. I mean, that's kind of what the Tyler is set to, the 1% rate thing. Not 1%, 100%. It's not multiplied compared to what it is in reality. And uh, it somehow became effective like in the last few laps of that Chicago Land race. And I'm talking about all this crap as I try to make my way through the field without wrecking all these drivers who have horrible tires. Uh, I'm really scared that they're just going to throw the car down to the bottom of the track in the middle of nowhere. They're not making them sudden moves yet, but I really do need to prepare for whenever they do. I think some of these drivers are about to go down pit road. I need to get by them. I have that get to the outside, so I'm not in their way. I think they all go down to the very bottom whenever they're about to take pit stops. The leaders really pulled away on them worn tires. It amazes me how freaking well they can drive on worn tires. It's just ridiculous. I mean, it's impossible to do that myself. So, is anybody going down pit road? I know some of these guys got a pit. You can't just not pit. Logano's blocking me. Logano, get out of the way. I don't care if you're my favorite driver. You're one of my least favorite drivers in the Xfinity Series. Ah, uh, I mean, he's my favorite driver in the Cup Series. In the Xfinity Series, he's one of my least favorites because he's a Cup driver. And you're not supposed to be racing the Xfinity Series if you're a Cup driver. That goes for the Truck Series as well. Okay. It's a really close battle for the leaders up there. But I've got my fresh tires. And, well, the leaders are going down the road anyway. So, it's just me in third place. Jones in second. And, uh, this is Brandon Jones. This is not Eric Jones. I think the leader might be Blake Cook again. And Brandon Jones just backed into me by going so slow with on tires. Yeah, as I was saying, I think it might be Blake Cook who's still in the lead right now, waiting it out for a little too long. Which might just help, um... It really might just... No, that's not Eric Jones. I mean, not Eric Jones. Uh, Blake Cook. That was Jeff Green. Well, that's surprising. But I was just saying, if it was Blake Cook staying out um, for the longest, then the other drivers that went down the road would get a, a whole another lap on fresh tires compared to him, which would probably lose him like half a damn second. I mean, that's how much slower you drive whenever you have more tires. And the tire wear is very progressive at this track because it's so new on the pavement. Well, assuming that we don't have another caution, here we go. Let's skip to that checkered flag. Give me that chubby. Give me that trophy! Give me that checkered flag! Uh, uh. Oh. Oh. Two ginormous loads have come down! Two more orgasms that are going to be even more satisfying to go! Call me what you will, but if you're gonna call me disgusting, take the time to acknowledge what they did to me at Charlotte was even more disgusting! Here are the race results. Yet again, we finish almost an entire lap in front of the field. Um, only the drivers that actually pitted with me stayed on the lead lap. I was coming up on lap traffic um, towards the end of the race, and um, it started with, I think it was Eric Jones. Maybe No, it wasn't Eric Jones. Who was it? Somebody in 35th. Who was in 35th? Uh, I can't scroll through the race results. Yeah, it was Ben Kennedy. He was the first guy in lap traffic that I came up to. That's how far behind everybody was. And it was weird because I had all those worn tires. They went down pit road. How was I faster than these guys on fresh tires? That's like, I mean, they have fresh tires. I've got worn tires. I'm supposed to be slowed down, yet I was somehow just starting to fly past guys on fresh tires. Like, that doesn't even add up. I mean, 
Uh, now, now this game's just not even making sense. And here's the point standings. Also, William Byron got a DNF. I don't know if y'all noticed that, but he finished dead last. If William Byron doesn't make the Final Four, that's gonna be sad. But, um, I think he's still got enough points or enough potential going into Phoenix to do it. Whatever. Here is the post-race information. That's not post-race information. That is the most legitimate information that you could possibly ever see. Oh, the not iRacing forward is not iRacing, but that trophy was really nice. But here is the post-race information. We ran the fastest lap with 30.58. Uh, most laps led was by Blake Cook. Yeah, I mean, he led all them laps until he had to take his pit stop, and then I guess I didn't lead the most laps whenever I took the lead for the remainder of the race. We started 28th and finished in first, which is the biggest mover just like always. And yeah, William Byron, you started in 6th, finished in 40th. I don't know what happened to him. William Byron just might not make the Final Four now. I mean, I'm not letting anybody win at Phoenix. Phoenix is a hard track in this game, so he might just do well in that race, and I might just like finish in 15th place or something because it's so hard to win there. But, um, I don't know, maybe, just maybe, he might make it. I'll see you guys next weekend at Phoenix International Raceway for race 32 of 33 which is going to be a 200-way ticket to Orgasmville. And then after that, we've got Homestead, like I said at the beginning of the video, the EcoBoost 300, or the 4 EcoBoost 300, whatever. Did I just say 400? It's the 400 in the Cup Series, yeah. But here are the playoff standings. William Byron's now below the cut line, which moves Elliot Tyler above the cut line. Daniel Hemrick is looking to not make the Final Four. That's nice to see. I really don't want to see Ty Dillon make the uh, playoffs at all because Ty Dillon is a spoon and fled wheel baby. Should be doing well. And there's Eric Jones. Maybe Eric Jones could make it. I'd be fine with that. But I really want to see William Byron get in there. Uh, somehow, Blake Cook started on pole and was leading the most laps at Texas and is now below the cut line. Uh, things are all over the freaking place and the race results and how things go right now. But the only thing that's um, confirmative is the fact that I'm winning races and being dominant with them pulling stupid-ass pit strategies on us. See you next time, that's that, and episode over.